Hi everyone, welcome to the first of a series of videos put on by your wholeness team, myself, Miss J, and Mrs. Z. Um, we're really excited to bring you a series of videos um, talking about different areas of mental health and well-being. Um, the purpose of these videos is to both bring you information um, and also bring you some tools um, to help you navigate different feelings and experiences that you might be having now during um, the shelter in place um, response to this global coronavirus pandemic or also just in general it can help give you information about things you may have struggled with for a long time um, and it also another goal of ours is to just help normalize and validate a lot of the experiences and feelings that you might be having um, but we felt that it would be super critical and important to start by talking about our brain okay um the brain regulates everything that happens in our um in our human functioning right and so i wanted to show you inside the brain i'm going to focus today primarily on our emotional center of the brain called the limbic system we're going to talk about the role that that plays in responding to fear um, and worry and anxiety and stress um, because and so that's located right in here deep deep in inside the brain kind of back behind the ears um, it's really important for us to understand the role that this part of the brain plays in our lives because sometimes we can feel um, a little crazy or like we should have more control over some of our reactions and responses um, but the reality is that a lot of our responses are automatic based on lived experience, okay? So um, I'm gonna just show you something really quickly. So this is called the prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe. So in, in, in our brains, that would be the front part of our brain. This is where we register all of the, the, the learning that we're doing, right? This is where we understand, this is where we make decisions, this is where we plan, this is where we do some logical reasoning, right? So this has to be really full on in order for us to learn and make good choices, right? But what happens when a fear response is kicked in is that, this, say that this is the brain and this is the prefrontal cortex, this is this part of the brain. Um, what happens is when we have a fear response, the learning part of our brain gets kicked offline and all that's left is this fully exposed emotional center. So imagine this going offline, boom, when we're worried or stressed or afraid, and then we're left with just our emotional responses kicking in. Um, so when that happens, we have very little control because we don't have access to this part of our brain until we calm down and are regulated. So I'm gonna give you an explanation of like how this is actually really great. Because remember, we all have been, remember back before we were, you know, civilized people living in homes with all of this technology, we had to learn how to survive in the wild. So it was really adaptive to have um, a stress response system like this, right? So imagine you are walking in the, in the forest and you see a bear. Immediately, your amygdala is going to send a signal to your, to your, see right in here, to your hypothalamus, which is going to send a signal to your pituitary gland and in your pituitary gland it will kick in a response of sending stress hormones flooding your body so cortisol adrenaline you may have heard of adrenaline it's something you feel when you're amped up maybe before a big game a little nervous a little excited um, it's a stress response hormone and what it what this and cortisol do is they allow our body to um, not have to use so much energy up here but it floods our limbs with more blood so that we can run faster it opens up our airwaves so we can breathe faster dilates our pupils so we can see better so it basically puts us into high alert so we can either fight flight or freeze right we're either going to fight we're going to freeze up or we're going to run away it's a fight flight and freeze response and they kind of function differently in different people so this is great and this is adaptive, right? But it becomes maladaptive when um, our body is registering threats that aren't really there. So say that 
maybe you've experienced a trauma and then um, your, your brain is now wired to respond to threat even when a threat maybe isn't there. It can become maladaptive. So you can feel um, a little bit checked out, like, like you're not really able to focus very well because your other systems, your stress systems are in higher alert. Um, and so these kinds of things can make us feel really crazy. But basically what happens is the more lived experiences that we have, this is what they say about the brain, the cells that fire together wire together. So if you have repetitive experiences of stress and anxiety and fear, um, your brain is going to be wired and more ready to respond to that stress and that threat and that fear than maybe somebody who has not had those experiences. And so it might uh, result in you having a harder time regulating your emotions. And it doesn't mean that you can't learn to. It doesn't mean that you can't have new experiences that rewire the way that your brain functions, but it just means that it might be harder. And what I'm here to tell you is that um, you're not crazy. Your brain is doing what it was designed to do. Um, and we can learn, um, we can learn ways to help our brains kind of settle and rewire. So um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody kind of, you know, had a sense of that. And um, again, like our brains are magical, magical things. And the good news about our brains is that even if we've had a bunch of stressful experiences and experiences of fear and trauma and worry, um, we can rewire our brains. Our brains have something called plasticity. And so the younger that you are, um, the more brain plasticity you have, the more capacity you have to change um, and to grow and to um, you know, have different experiences that can help rewire your brain. So it's pretty good news. Um, anyway, we hope to talk a little bit more about the brain, um, but in the meantime, look out for part two with Miss Z, who's going to talk about the connection between our thoughts and our feelings and our behaviors. So it makes sort of a triangle. She's going to talk about those three things and how they go together um, and things that we can do to um, change some of our thoughts, which will then change some of our feelings, which will then change some of our behaviors. Um, anyway, thank you so much for sticking with me and look out for part two.